Operation Harsh Doorstop, the free tactical FPS sandbox that spans across modern World War I, II, Vietnam. Every theater of war you can imagine can be in this game. A game that gives you the tools to make whatever your heart desires. If you want helicopters, you can make that. If you want new guns, you can make that too. If you want a fun, feature complete tactical FPS, you can make that as well. Right now, Operation Harsh Doorstop, just being honest, is in pretty rough shape. But it's one of those things that I believe the dev team knows and has already addressed. I'll be honest and say that I'm a little conflicted because a lot of the criticism that's being levied against the game itself, I'm in agreement on. But the defense from the dev team and the reasons they've given, I'm also in agreement on. It's hard because Blue Drake and I have obviously known each other for a lot of years, have been friends for a lot of that time, and uh, I was around during the early, early stages of OHD, and knowing where it was to where it's at now, it's night and day. That being said, there are clearly glaring issues with the game that I've been trying to figure out the best way to go about covering, but in true Big Fry fashion, I'm just going to rip the band-aid off and we're going to go in. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Big Fry and let's get into it. So I want to start with the gunplay here because I actually really enjoy the feel of these weapons across pretty much every theater of war that I've played. All of the guns actually feel really good to shoot. I do have to say, this is just personal opinion, I am tired of games set in the modern setting where, you know, insurgents get AKs with iron sights versus PMCs with, you know, ARs, hollows, four grips. When you're in long range combat, which these games tend to be, it's clear who has the advantage and who has like, like a clear sight picture versus somebody having to use AKs. I understand why it's designed like that, but I'm also just kind of over it. Now, the cool thing about that gripe is, if I wanted to mod the game using its SDK, I can just do that. I have a server in the game where I can build out, you know, custom factions and weapons and we can set up our own guns. Hell, I could even mod the game to allow custom loadouts with attachments if I wanted to go that deep. And that's where the defense of the developers come in. They've created a system where if you don't like something, you can just go in and change it if you have the knowledge to do so. Don't like something, you can just change it or make it yourself. But it's weird because as I say that, it's also kind of a false sense of shielding from any sort of criticism of the baseline product, right? Like, if you don't like what we've created, use our tools and make it yourself, could be seen as a cop-out of sorts, and that is definitely part of the criticism that is being levied here. Take for instance the ability to revive teammates in a game like Squad. OHD right now does not have that, and I'll let Blue Drake himself tell you why in his own words. There are details missing or things that have not been implemented yet. It's not because I don't know you all don't want them. It's because I've intentionally not done that because I'm waiting to see what you all want. We have implemented all of the most basic shit in the game that we feel pretty confident that everybody is definitely gonna want you know there's still a bunch of features that are missing but all of the features that are missing are all things where it's like man you know what we don't really know what people are gonna want and yeah i mean i guess we could just like rip off from other games and make something that's like exactly like squad or exactly like hell at loose but that's not really what we want to do we want to leave this a little bit more open so that way we can develop these features possibly in different ways, maybe ways that have never been done before that are just gonna be better. And the best way to do that is to leave them out. <laughs> so that way you all can add them in as mods in different ways so we can see what makes the most sense. Now, this is an interesting take that we haven't really seen before. I have been critical of developers building out games with mod tools, having a very baseline experience that doesn't offer much, but then the modding community can then take over, or, or should say, the expectation of the mod community to then take over. It's weird because I usually say it's a cop-out, and I feel like part of me thinks it is here as well, but then you hear Blue say things like this. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you upload a mod, you will probably win within 24 hours have some developer, if not me personally, reach out to you and be like, hey, that's a cool mod. Like, what are you thinking? 
like maybe we should do this we'll incorporate you into the main development studio so that way you can talk to the rest of the developers that's how we've operated so far and i gotta say the whole thing is really really strange as someone who reviews and discusses games on the merit that they offer right now usually i provide feedback and criticism to get things fixed but in this instance who can I direct that criticism to? Like in OHD, the fact that their vaulting takes a hundred years and the animation locks you in and it's just so slow and tedious, leading you to get killed more often than not is very, very frustrating. And if I want to voice that opinion to which I'm then met with, well, mod it yourself or we're working on it because it's early access, this is where I'm conflicted, right? Their vaulting needs a complete overhaul. I think the player controller is a bit clunky at times and you'll notice it a lot while you're sprinting and trying to change directions. I think the grenade throwing needs a complete rework, but the main culprit for me is the lack of quality of life features that games like Squad already have. Things like rallies and fobs for forward spawning, better map tools for squad leads to actually, you know, make markers and form assaults and tell their squad what direction they want to go in. The fact that you can barely see your team's blueberries, let alone your own squad, there's a lot of things that this game needs severe improvements on at a core level. And the thing is, is those improvements can either come from the dev team themselves or from the modding community who is already starting to put mods on their platform. It's actually a pretty sweet gig. The devs have set it up to where the stress of post-launch fixes and content can kind of be lifted off their shoulders a little bit while the mod community kind of takes over. OHD's biggest challenge right now is keeping people engaged with the gameplay loop they have enough to bring modders to this platform. The base game, in my opinion, is lacking to say the least, and I know modders can take this shit to the next level. We're already seeing mods being uploaded to the Steam Workshop. This could be the next big thing in multiplayer tactical FPS, and I know that these guys have been working their asses off for years to build a game that can support this community. The game is rough right now, but I, I also believe in due time, I think they're going to get there. It's a matter of how much community support can they garner right now with the game that they have. And I'll be honest with you, I can see why people jump in and don't like that experience. There is a lot of things missing from a game like this that needs to be there in 2023. So their biggest challenge is keeping people engaged enough to build out the game as their community and i think that is going to be an uphill battle but we already are seeing forward progress with that modding community so it's it's going to be an interesting experiment man i haven't seen anything like this and i i will say the core game itself while it's early is definitely comparable to the early days of squad as always guys i want to know what you guys think about ohd i know a lot of you guys have been asking me to cover it it's an interesting thing because i don't think right now the core game experience can keep me playing for longer than i would probably say about a week but that's obviously my opinion, and it's not to say that there's nothing wrong with it. It's just I have already been spoiled by games like Squad and games like Arma who just have a more robust and built-out feature set, right? And obviously, OHD is free, so it's not like I just spent a bunch of money to get, you know, fucked. I, it's just kind of like, all right, I'm going to let the community cook, see where the mods take it, and maybe in a couple of months, we actually might see a lot of forward progress in things that I've been, you know, talking about. The vaulting, the reviving, the vehicles. I think they're gonna get there it's just a matter of you know kind of waiting and seeing i don't think right now just as a content creator there's enough meat on the bone on ohd to really cover the core game where people need to be focused on is what's coming in the mod support and maybe that's something I do just to kind of keep this game in the rotation is to talk about some of the new mods that are being developed and coming out for the core experience to make it better. Let me know what you guys think down below. And as always, guys, if you can leave a like on the video and subscribe for more tactical FPS, indie, triple lane, everything in between. My name is Big Fry. Shout out to the 307,000 Fry Nation members. And I'll see you on the next one.